into our statement as a family. The reason why we found it expedient for us as a family to come out and speak from our standpoint is simply because there are a lot of theories and a lot of visions, some of which we're only getting uh, to know or acquainted with through the press or through the media. But uh, we felt that it was incumbent upon us as a family to say or to uh, relay this issue from our own standpoint. That's the reason why we found it proper for us to, uh, to call for this press uh, conference. Today marks a week ever since the disappearance of Itai Zamara. By now, as a family, we hope to have made headway in the search for our son, our brother, and father. Unfortunately, we can categorically confirm that in spite of all our efforts in partnership with our legal team to locate Itai Zamara, or to at least gain knowledge as to what really transpired after his unlawful abduction, no tangible movement has been registered thus far. As a family, we do not know where he is. All we can do at this juncture is to assume. The past week has certainly been one of the most tumultuous and tormenting week for us as a family. We admit that we are dealing with an unsmiling and extremely complex situation. With that in mind, we are eternally grateful for the support we continue to receive from many individuals and organizations. We do not take it lightly. Itai Peace Kadiki Zamara was abducted on Monday the 9th of March from a barber shop, from a barber's shop in his <coughs> neighborhood by five men who handcuffed him and accused him of stock theft. These same men had been noticed roaming in Itai's neighborhood for, uh, in two vehicles. We still hold on to hope, even though the West is indeed a possibility. We keep on praying. There's been a lot of rumors, visions, and theories promulgated by various individuals and or media outlets, some of which are certainly malicious lies. Hence, our decision as a family to then come out and state from our own standpoint what really transpired. <clears throat> Nevertheless, we give it to them they are entitled to their positions. Meanwhile, as a family, we keep our minds and focus, uh, and focus stayed on the mission of finding a time. As a family, we are not omniscient. We are also seeking to know what transpired. As such, we can't confirm any of those rumors, visions, or theories at this point in time. We actually vehemently reject them. We have engaged our legal team over those, and it is our hope that those responsible will be made to account. We are in no way illusioned as to the humanity of one of our own, Itai. As a human being, of course, Itai had his own fair share of failure along the trajectory of his life and purpose. But we are thoroughly convinced that his missing transcends his humanity and priorities thereof. We perceive a bigger hand in this and we unequivocally reject the notion that this is grand sta uh, standing, this is a grandstanding effort masterminded by him and his colleagues. That is not true. The bottom line is that we do not know where Itai is. It seems as though some people know where he is, and we are appealing to them and the state 
to help us find the time. We are certainly not enjoying this period. It is hard for us as a family. This is not a job. We believe if there is anyone out there who genuinely has any information or theory regarding his whereabouts, he or she <coughs> as a responsible citizen must approach the authorities and assist with information. For as long as such people are not prepared to make their information available to us as a family and to the police, then their stories must be rejected with uttermost content. In our interactions with the police, they remain adamant that they do not have a hand in this and that they do not know where Itai is. We are not sure about that. But they have so far been cooperative in our quest to find Itai. However, and in spite of that, we still stick to our suspicion that Itai's abduction was done from a position of authority. We do not know who exactly, how exactly, but we still hold strongly to the view that a hand of authority was involved in Itai's abduction. Hence, our rejection of those theories that have been peddled in the media, malicious lies. We are appealing to the conscience of our government and all, these, all Zimbabweans to help us in our quest to find Itai Zamara. We say, bring back Itai Zamara as a family. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a panoramic overview of our position as a family. This is uh, how we are looking at this issue. This is how this issue has unfolded thus far from our standpoint as a family. We do know that so many people have actually been uh, propounding and uh, spreading malicious rumors. I'm sure last week we even told that his body was found in Guromonzi. We uh, actually went there and that was all, those were all lies. But as a family, we decided to set the record straight. Uh, straight. And with us today, uh, his colleagues, Itai's colleagues, with whom he worked as an activist, and we thought that they should come in order for them to augment uh, our position as a family and also to give the other side of the story. Because I'm sure most of you are aware by now that uh, some media outlets are actually propounding that Itai's colleagues are involved or they have a hand in his abduction. That's the reason why we actually found it noble and expedient for them to be here and uh, we're going to allow them to speak to you and give uh, their brief <coughs> statements. Okay, we'll start off with uh, Nya, that's the National Youth Action Alliance. Thank you so much. I will read our statement on behalf of National Youth Action Alliance as the chairperson of Nya. Since the abduction of Mr. Itai Zamara on Monday, the 90th, the 9th of March, the National Youth Action Alliance, a coalition of more than 20 organizations, has been successfully engaging in supporting the Zamara family in search for him. In addition to supporting the legal processes and investigations to locate and secure the release of spokesperson of Nya, Mr. Zamara, we have been involved in organizing and executing peaceful street marches and petitions, as well as using social media to raise awareness and inform the true course of events in the current state of the case. Last Wednesday, through the assistance of other youth, we had a success, successful march of more than 150 youth who engaged in a peaceful demonstration to deliver a petition to the parliament <coughs> as an effort to make sure that Mr. Itai Zamara returns. It is highly unfortunate and regrettable that the event <coughs> turned violent due to some misguided individuals who tried by all means to silence our efforts. 
However, we urge all members of the uniformed forces as well as civilians to abstain from and prevent such acts of violence. There have been many incorrect and at times malicious rumors circulating about how and why Mr. Zamara disappeared. We appeal to the sources of these falsehoods and the general public to refrain from publishing and passing on those stories as they mud the waters and divert the attention of investigations from the main course of the investigation. We would like to express our sincere thanks and acknowledgement of the police through their spokesperson Cherry Charamba and Vice President Emerson Nangagwa for their statement condemning the abduction. However, to us, condemning only is not enough until we see the return of Itai and yet. We also thank the broad support we have received from the many voices calling for the return of Itai Zamara. We shall continue to carry all necessary and unnecessary means to ensure the release of Mr. Zamara until he is reunited with his family, friends and colleagues. I thank you. Thank you. Uh, we will, we're going to hand over to OAUS, an outfit Itai founded, and Dak went to the art of Good afternoon. My name is Dirk Frey. I am a deputy chairperson of OAUS, the Occupy Africa Union Square Movement. During the past week of tribulations since the abduction of our founding chairperson, Comrade Itai Zamara, we have been gratified by the outpouring of support from our allies and partners. Our deepest sympathy extends to the Zamara family, fully aware that this abduction is most likely in response to our activities, and our thoughts and prayers are with them constantly. In October last year, Itai launched this movement, which saw him lead and mold a group of young civilians from all walks of life, regardless of political affiliation, into a close-knit group bound by common dreams and convictions. Itai is a charismatic and bold visionary who combines and exemplifies many of the best traits of Zimbabwe. <coughs> His courage and strength have carried him through many trials, and we are confident they can carry him through this one as well. Since we began, it has been our policy, instituted by Itai, that whenever trouble of this kind befalls any of our members, we put on hold any other activities in order to, and until, they are safe once more. To this end, we have been joined by our partners in vocally demanding the return of Itai, both in Zimbabwe and in the diaspora, with demonstrations taking place in London and Pretoria. We shall carry on pursuing our objectives and carry the torch until Itai returns to reclaim it and his position in order to lead us towards a better Zimbabwe. We shall also carry on being available to support the Zamara family in any way we can. Because we are the people, we are the numbers. And we say bring back Itai now. Thank you. Uh, we hope we're going to head over to uh, their colleague from Zapu, so they work together, Anta Yeah. Uh, thank you, comrades and friends. My name is Lloyd Pasima Sarirambi. On behalf of Zabu and as a Secretary General of Konya, which was born on the 7th of February 2015, um, we are saying to all those speculations which are being said, ITA has been given a suspension later, which might be said to be uh, one of the things participating in his adoption, we are saying that thing is totally out from our side. The reason being, for that later which people are talking of, the guy in question <coughs> was actually expelled from Nya, not by Itai, but by the parties which are involved, the organizations which are involved in Nya. So if anything was to be done for Itai or for that particular person, he was not going to summon Itai, but he was going to summon the organizations which actually gave him later. So, in terms of Itai, we don't deal individually, we deal as organizations. And now I really appeal to you all, comrades and friends, with my experience from what I know on the police force of Zimbabwe, which is being said to be the superstars of investigating and creating whatever is wanted in Zimbabwe, I actually say we are going to get Itai now. Thank you, comrades and friends.
Thank you. Uh, we're going to hand over to um, ANC, the Zimbabwe chapter. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Alpheus Mabranda. I'm the Secretary General of African National Council, ANC Zimbabwe, the party that was founded by the Bishop Abdel Musorewa. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the President of African National Council, Mr. Nesbitt, <coughs> the, the party which is the Vice Chair of the National Youth Alliance, where Itai is the spokesman, I say is because I believe that he's still alive, would like to tell his family that we condemn at all costs the barbaric <coughs> act that was carried out, that was carried out by by whoever did it. We hold the government accountable as it is their duty to protect its citizens. If government does not show meaningful concern about finding a time, we will soon, as a political party, start engaging Sadak and the rest of the world to force the government to move with speed. To those, kid to, to those who kidnapped our fellow comrades, I would like to say to you, you may have Itai, but you won't suppress the spirits of Zimbabwe, for Zimbabwe is yearning for a new Zimbabwe. Itai used to say, I belong to OAUS, I belong to DARI, I belong to MDCs, ANC, MKD, ZAPU. Many to say he was a true democrat, a Zimbabwean. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to head over to MKD. Okay, I'm Congress Stevens for the National Youth President for MKG. The President of MKG, Dr. Simama Ford, and the National Management Committee, <coughs> and the entire membership of MKG, knows the great concern the abduction of Congress Fred Zamara and join thousands of Zimbabweans in demanding his release. We demand that he be released immediately and unarmed. His fundamental human rights and freedom should be respected. We also demand a full investigation and the arrest of the culprits. Justice should not be selective. And we should also convey that the state will be removed that the demonstrating for the Zamara's release. And if it is not released immediately, we call upon all progressive forces to engage in meeting to demand answers from the police without delay. We can no longer watch the fundamental human rights of the people of Zimbabwe continue to be disregarded. We by here call upon the international community, political parties, civil groups, and churches to join in the demanding in Thank you for your comments. Thank you so much. Um, we thank you for, for the solidarity and for coming through to show the support. At this point in time, we're just going to um, open the floor for a few questions. And uh, having said that, we have our family members here. Ty's wife is here. Uh, the children are here. Our mother is here. And other family members are also here. <coughs> But as far as um, any interview is concerned, would encourage you to actually come to me. None of them are going to be speaking on any matter whatsoever pertaining to this uh, issue of Itai's abduction. But at this juncture, if you have any question, please raise your hand, uh, direct it to whoever amongst uh, or on this panel, and we'll be able to respond. Thank you. Okay, we'll start with gifts. No questions? No, I don't have any Any questions? Feel free to ask any, any clarifications. <coughs> okay. We take it that. Oh, yeah. You say the, the fear for the West. Uh, how strong is that fear? And also, you made reference to. Some uh, past failures. What, what, what if you elaborate on that as well? Well, every human being. <coughs> okay. 
every human being, including you, say, um, as long as a human being, one way or the other, you are going to trip. One way or the other, you are going to fail. And the reason why I had to breeze through that neighborhood in my speech is because we read uh, certain publications pertaining to his humanity and also uh, the trajectory he has traversed in terms of personal failures. Of course, um, we cannot really uh, say that our brother is a saint. Neither are you, neither is anyone a saint. And so for anyone to then use that as the basis upon which they spread malicious theories and unfounded visions of, uh, about this abduction, we think it's totally unacceptable. We reject that. And we think it's actually unfair even to us as a family. We're going through a tough time, as I noted, and we actually implore and we are appealing to Zimbabweans to stand with us. I'm sure that's Ubuntu. I'm sure that's uh, Hunu, where if your neighbor's house is on fire, what do you do? You go and help out. You don't throw uh, <coughs> Petrol container, <coughs> you go and help out. That's all we are asking from Zimbabwe at this point in time. As a family, we do not know where Itai is. We noted that we do not know what happened after the abduction. We do not know his fate as we speak right now. We do not know. But we're still clinging, we're still holding on to that uh, hope <coughs> that one day or pretty soon. We're going to meet our brother. We're going to meet one of us. <clears throat> okay, Edgar. Uh, okay, uh, my question is directed to you now. Uh, let me, after you get the over at petition and after the protest march, uh, it seems there is a big news coming out as far as the church is aware about something. Now, let me know from what's in the Okay, thank you so much. I think as I alluded earlier on, we we'll always implore all means necessary and unnecessary to ensure that Ita is brought back alive. I think as, as soon as we ended the petition, there were some utterances from the relevant authorities claiming that they would not accept the abduction, therefore they would take action. But we are sick and tired of lip service from the relevant authorities, therefore we we'll continue pursuing uh, by all means necessary to ensure that Itai is brought back alive because we believe he did not commit any crime with specific focus to the constitution of the nation. Section 59 is very clear that everyone has got a right to petition and demonstrate. Therefore, whatever Itai was doing in his life was doing something which falls within the confines of the law. Okay. Uh, you mentioned taking this uh, further afield to the international community and appealing to other nations to have some input in this. How have, how have you found the response from the embassies here so far? Has it been useful? And what would you hope, hope for them to do? No, there is. I think they want to respond to that. Uh, yes, they have. Uh, already there have been several responses. Um, for example, I think there was the, the EU endorsed by the Swiss and uh, um, no one. Norwegian, that's the one. Thank you. Uh, Norwegian embassies, the, uh, the American embassy. Um, so quite a number of embassies has come, have come out and made statements in support and condemning the abduction. Uh, now in terms of international support afield, uh, especially among Zimbabweans living in other countries, there has been uh, quite a, an upswell of, of concern and of messages of support which we have received from them. Um, furthermore, there are international organizations such as Amnesty International, which are also um, putting pressure and adding their voices in condemning this abduction. Um, so basically, um, the situation we have now is that there is an international aspect to it. Um, but I would like to stress that this international aspect is in conjunction and in support of um, the outcry that is happening here at home. 
for the gift. Uh, I noticed the, the statements issued were largely from Western embassies. Have there been any statements of um, solidarity from African missions in Harare? They are, I believe that from AU countries. Which ones? They have, um, I cannot recall at this moment. Um, but unfortunately, there has been not as much as we would like. Especially SADC countries have been silent on this issue. Um, we are in the